arising out of this, you know, level of movement is you're a princess, is a rich man out there that's your age, that's attractive, that only wants you, that wants a traditional marriage. Girl. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here and I really appreciate your time. I just wanted to come on here today and speak with you guys about just this whole concept of high value men versus low value uh, men, low value women versus high value women, this whole kind of discussion that's been going on on social media. Um, I just wanted to share my thoughts because I've been watching a lot of commentary lately um, about these things, um, not like, uh, and, and, and the entirety, but just the, the mentioning of these things. And oftentimes I'm participating in discussions on Facebook, Instagram, Clubhouse um, about these kind of conversations. And in light of the whole thing with Portia, it has brought up again these kind of conversations. And I just wanted to talk about this because with all the commentary I've been hearing when I'm involved in these conversations on social media, I'm seeing certain things missing from the dialogue. And so I wanted to, to discuss with you guys today why I think so many of us are, in particular black women, why so many of us are drawn to these conversations and feel the need to, um, you know, you know, land our, our, our flag here and, you know, this is where the hill we're going to die on. And why I, I honestly think it's, you know, detrimental to the black community because it's, just facilitating more dysfunction and causing us to have more unsuccessful relationships because we're not dating the right people. So first of all, I want to start off by defining the difference between high value and high earning. I think, you know, what has been lost within these conversations is what a high value man actually is versus what we think it is or um, what a lot of people are saying it is so that this high value man becomes unattainable to all of us, right? So that it becomes kind of like this this mythical creature that we're all chasing and that we can all focus on. We can, men, it gives you a reason, you know, or should I say an excuse as to why your relationships with women are not working because you're high value and they don't know how to, you know, meet your standards. Women, it gives you an excuse as to, oh, well, the reason why I am not having success uh, success in my dating life is because none of the men I'm dating is high value. I need to find that one high high value man and everything. No. Briefly, I want to break down what is the difference. So a high earning man is literally just that. A man that earns a lot of money. Um, he has wealth. He has riches. He has resources. Most likely has power influence as well, right? So someone that's a CEO or, you know, someone um, that has a high ranking position um, in the military or uh, someone who, and in a lot of cases, you know, can be recommended as CEO, they're in a high position within a corporate entity, um, within a large, you know, franchise, they, they may own all of the franchises or they may, you know, operate over a couple of them. Like they're in a position where their job affords them to make a lot of money and access, right? So they have a certain type of house, they have a certain type of car, they may have a private jet, um, all these things that we kind of associate with rich men, right? Okay, that's all a high earning man is, a rich man. Now, a high value man, to me, in my personal opinion, this is coming off someone who, you know, has had quite a few relationships and is currently married and now has an understanding of what's necessary in order to have a successful relationship, like what things I should have been looking for a lot sooner um, as a young woman is, you know, high value men are men that are valuable because they are a valuable partner in their relationships, right? So what that basically means is he has qualities, he has characteristics, um, you know, his, his actions oftentimes create or put forth an environment for a successful, healthy, happy relationship to continue to grow and develop. And it's not saying that he's perfect because no one is perfect. 
It is specifically the things that make up his character, that inform his actions, that make him valuable in a relationship. So we're talking about a man that is mature, a man that's, you know, accountable, a man that, you know, has gotten to a point in his life where he is only looking to make certain decisions, you know, for the most part, because he understands, uh, you know, consequences. He understands that, you know, hey, if I do this, this is going to be what I end up with. I don't want to deal with this. So he's, he's, you know, he's trying to avoid drama. He's trying to avoid a lot of the traps that men and their youth get caught up in because they're not thinking about it in terms of long-term happiness. They're only living for the moment. Well, a high value man is past that point in his life. And, it's, and I'm, not, I'm not even talking about age in particular. His mindset is matured to the point where he's looking for certain things and certain things only. And so for the most part, about 70 to 85% of his actions are gonna be geared towards fostering peace, productivity, happiness, um, wealth, comfortability, and not in a negative sense, but comfortability in terms of this is how it's going to be. This is solid. I have put in the work and this is going to, this is going to be sustainable, right? So that's one aspect. Another aspect is a high value man has life skills and wisdom that caused him to be able to do helpful things in certain situations. So life skills as in he knows how to change a tire. He knows how to, he owns tools. He knows how to use these power tools. He knows how to fix leaks and, 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 and busted pipes and how to put up a TV and how to, you know, he has these basic life skills that allow him to be an asset in these everyday life, you know, situations that come up. Whereas a man who doesn't have these skills will basically be a bystander and won't be able to offer you any help as a woman or to whoever he's in a relationship with because he has he does he doesn't have any life skills. Life skills could also be applied to similar to what I was saying earlier, but wisdom in a sense of you understand how to connect dots, right? He understands how this over here relates to this over here relates to that over here. So he understands how to move in and out of situations uh, so that it, again creates a better outcome for not just himself, but his children and whoever else he's in a relationship with. So that is high value. That that that, that has high value in a relationship because it's high. If you think about it, those traits and characteristics would be highly valuable to anyone who is looking for a good partner to be with long term. Another aspect of his personality is surprising. I don't know if a lot of people realize it, but he's moderately progressive and in a sense that. He understands the parts of the past that worked and the, the parts of the past that didn't, as well as he understands what new sort of modern ideas can be useful to his home and his family, as well as which ones that are kind of silly and don't really apply to him. He knows how to put, you know, put stuff together. He knows how to create a, a version of healthy patriarchy that is there when he needs to stand firm and needs to stand tall and needs to be strong and protective and also knows how to pull back and be more sensitive and understanding and show up as a father figure to be loving and caring and kind and, to, and you know, basically has the depth to address different needs and different levels. Again, sometimes they will be physical needs that require strength, brute, you know, all these other traditionally masculine uh, traits. And he also knows how to still be come and have a conversation and give a, give a good, wholesome hug, a wholesome hug. He knows how to be comforting. He knows how to be thoughtful and give advice to a woman or a young man about life that will be, again, helpful to them and beneficial to them, right? So that's high value. Um, lastly, what I want to say is a high value man is a man that does know how to be fiscally responsible. You know, whether or not he is extremely ridiculously wealthy or if he just has a great job and he's set up in such a way where he can pay his bills comfortably and whoever, whoever else's bills he chooses to commit himself to. That is, that is valuable because 
you will date some men and now you have health insurance from marrying him. Or now if you don't, if he doesn't automatically come with health insurance, he has the finances to pay for health insurance. So now you have, this is, it's, it's things that a lot of times people don't think about because a lot of times we, this conversation drifts over to the more shallow things like breaking bags and, 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 and getting flued out and vacations and all that is great and fine. But the reality is real life long-term marriages are not made up of those types of things. They are made up of, off of the basic building blocks of everyday life. And a lot of it comes down to the expenses of everyday life. And may not, it may not be important to some women, but to other women it is. And to those women, a high value man is a man that knows how to, like I said, and is able to make responsible money choices and keep everything afloat and do it in such a way where it's not, you know, stressful or, or you know, the children don't know, you know, that is actually a, a, a mark of it. You know, a lot of times I'll talk to them and when they talk about, you know, their fathers, their positive fathers, <laughs> They'll, they'll oftentimes say, I didn't know that we didn't have money. My dad still, da -da 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 -da. he still, da -da 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 -da. we still went, da -da -da -da. I still had, da -da -da. it's because that her father was able to keep everything afloat and keep it afloat seamlessly so that his poor choices didn't start to seep out into other areas of his life, i.e. his wife or children and cause them to have, you know, all these other issues and cause anxiety and, and you know, feeling like their stuff is going to, like all of that is a part of high value. So what I'm basically describing is an ideal husband. I'm not describing, um, you know, a man that, you know, you that we oftentimes talk about on social media. I'm talking about a man who is high value because his value is high. The, the value that he holds as a partner is high. Um, the impact that he will have on another woman or whatever children that he has is going to be majority a positive impact. That in turn is going to have generational benefits long after he's gone. So that is a high value man. Now I just want to briefly talk about why I believe so many of us are drawn to these conversations as well as drawn to the social media personalities who <laughs> are pretty much making money off of the gender the gender wars and the few that's going that's been going on for quite a while. A lot of us do not have, unfortunately, uh healthy marriages, healthy relationships model before us as children. Um, I was born in 1992, um, and that was around the time where there was the same type of gender war going on in the 90s between black men and black women, you know, involving Oprah and Terry McMillan. It was a similar situation as it is to now. There were a lot of, you know, divorces, you know, there, there were a lot of dysfunctionality that happened that I think later on had impact that a lot of us don't really register and understand. And so a lot of us don't have father figures. A lot of us don't have these, these men in our lives as examples that we can go, that we can look at in real life and, you know, go and go and even answer questions now that most of us are in our thirties, you know, to late twenties. We don't have anyone that we can go and talk to and really have real conversations with and ask them about, Hey, I want to know what is wife material. I want to know what is husband material. I want to know how do you do this? How do you stay with one person for a long time? How do you, we don't really have anyone to have these type of conversations with without even realizing it. Oftentimes we look to these, you know, personalities to give us these answers. And because they come across, as, you know, as authoritative and, you know, absolute and short of themselves, we, you know, a lot of people ingest what they're saying and believe that what they're saying has to be the truth. And so, and it's because we're looking for that. We are looking for that. We are looking for that. We are looking for people to give us the answers to relationships. Okay. That's what we're looking for. And again, so unfortunately, because a lot of us don't understand and don't want to do the work of analyzing our childhoods and understanding why, you know, the things that we saw at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten are affecting us at 24 and 26 and, and so forth. Like, we're not actually interested in doing that work. We want the excuse to give us uh, a way around, you know, basically, like, you know, literally creating heuristics for us to not have to address ourselves. You have to understand that social media is social media, and there is absolutely a real life, even though we're still dealing with the panorama, there's a real life outside of social media and there are real things that do and don't apply to both 
realms, for lack of a better phrase. So if you're running around listening to someone who is saying salacious things and being a provocateur on purpose on social media because that's how they're paid, and you're, you're, you're internalizing the things they're saying as truth and you're trying to apply them in your real life, I think a lot of us are gonna end up in these vicious cycles where we keep getting exactly what we are trying to get away from because again, we're not going back to what the actual problem may be, which is ourselves and not and not in the sense of, oh, let's, you know, I'm a, I'm a bad person, I'm, I'm a horrible person, you know, I picked the wrong man. It's not, it's not so much that, it's again, your childhood are some of the first ideas that you have about yourself, as well as how you see interactions with other people, and particularly romantic relationships. So if you are seeing dysfunction, if you are seeing abandonment, if you are seeing, you know, manipulation and narcissism and all these types of things, that is not going to go nowhere. That's going to affect you later on. And I don't think a lot of us are really understanding that our childhoods hold the keys to a lot of our behaviors as adults. And especially when it comes to the people that we're always drawn to in romantic relationships. For me, to be transparent, I did not have a great father. My father was not... Um, there for me as a child and he's not there for me and as an adult but now it's more so as a choice I don't want him to be <laughs> in my life um because he's failed you know a, a, a lot of other things that he was supposed to do already that he's lost the opportunity to do because of me growing up being raised by a single mom and seeing my mom struggle so much and remembering so many times in my life where there was something I couldn't do or something she couldn't buy me or a camp I couldn't, you know, be enrolled in or, or I couldn't afford this, you know, this outfit for dance class or I couldn't do this or I couldn't do that, you know, not just because of money, but because my mom didn't have the time because she was working all the time. That impressed upon me that whoever I dated, number one, they would have to have more than me. Like, I'm not dating someone. Like, if I have three cookies, I need you to have at least four cookies. Like, that basic on the basic level that started to inform the way I started to date men secondly um watching what my mom went through informed how I had sex um a, a large reason as to why I didn't sleep around a lot when I was single is not for me being like this awesome Christian and, and absent no it's because I made the connection that if you have sex with the wrong man and you have his child, your life will suck and so will that child's. I made that connection probably somewhere at like 12 or 13. And that literally followed me throughout my entire life. And now at 28 years old, when I look back at my decisions, I see that a lot of the men that I chose where men that I felt, at least, on you know, based off of certain characteristics, would be good fathers and husbands. And I made a lot of mistakes, <laughs> um, you know, mischaracterizing certain traits. But that was basically what I was after. I was after that. I was. And I was after it because I didn't have it as a child. That's just me, right? I'm sure there's a lot of other people who their dating choices directly come from the, the type of uh, woman their mother was or the type of man their father was. And it has nothing to do with these ridiculous social media <laughs> um, talking points that you hear. I just, I just really wanna encourage you to think about that and think about it in real terms um, and not get lost in this banter that is just literally for clicks and views. Lastly, I wanted to say directly to black women, is while I am a huge supporter of the Level Up movement, right? And a lot of these other kind of social movements that are encouraging women, in particular black women, to have a higher self-esteem, to raise your expectations, to expect more for yourself, to believe that you're worthy of more, there is a side to it that again involves this high value talk that I believe has become hurtful. <sighs> you don't wanna replace one fallacy with another. Right. So the first fallacy that black women are oftentimes given is that, you know, we are, you know, unwanted, we're unloved, we're not pretty enough, we're not beautiful enough. Um, you know, we need to take what we can get, especially if you're dark skin. Um, you need to hold the man down. You need to be the, the around the way girl. You need to hold him down, hold him down, hold him down. You know, you 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 need to accept whatever life gives you, you know, you're 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 not worthy of those type of men and don't no. That was one policy. 
The next policy that I feel like is, is arising out of this, you know, level of movement is you're a princess, and there's a rich man out there that's your age, that's attractive, that only wants you, that wants a traditional marriage. Girl. No. <laughs> um, quick side note, I don't, you know, I am a former commercial print model. I absolutely live that life i ex i absolutely met these high value men that a lot of people never even see in real life i have been with them i have been on dates with them i've been in their houses i've been on their jets i have actually been around these men and what i can tell you from my experience from the one that i actually had a long-term relationship with is number one he was not my age or anywhere close to my age he was attractive but he was not my age um he did not want a traditional marriage because at that point he had already been married a couple times. He'd already had kids. So he was at a different point in his life. So even though I was like 22, he's like, no, baby, that's not what I'm, I'm no, 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 sweetheart. So not my age, didn't want traditional marriage, didn't want traditional type of relationship. And a, the, the part of that non-traditional relationship was I would, I would be his main one, but not his only. So... I said that to say that <laughs> this idea that every black woman from leveling up will end up with, again, uh, a, a, a super, super wealthy, rich man that's her age, that's attractive, that only wants her, is a fallacy. And I think it's very dangerous because now, again, we're, we're, we're not actually getting anywhere. We're not actually improving. We're just, again, replacing one fallacy with another. And I'm sorry if that is upsetting to you, but again, high earning and high value are not the same. And if you if you want to level up and 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 have happiness for yourself and have a great marriage and you know aspire to be with a man that loves you and embraces you, that's not a it's not always going to be a high earning man. And if, and and the reality is most of us are not going to end up with these wealthy extremely wealthy men we don't even know where they are we are circle like there's nothing wrong with going after a type of man that traditionally that tra that traditionally you may have felt that you couldn't get before but you still want to be realistic and you still want to have goals for yourself that are attainable in real life that will produce real happiness and peace and 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 feeling fulfilled and long term will make a good husband and will long term make a good father that's important i mean if that's important to you I, 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 if that's important to you if none of that is important to you that's fine and that brings me to portia which is my last point of this video there are some women who are only interested in getting the bag and using marriage as a you know, a means to attain the bag. And that's fine, right? All I say to those women is just really make sure that your paperwork is in order. Uh, make sure make sure that you really know what you're doing and make sure that he's not outsmarting you in the end because sis, I have seen that as well. Um, <laughs> Portia is, you know, is like I spoke about earlier, she, it's very clear if you look at her dating history, at least her public dating history, that she doesn't know how to pick men. She doesn't know how to select the right man for herself. She doesn't, she doesn't know what qualities to look for. She just always tries to go for a man with money and that doesn't always work out. I'm not here to make all these judgments about her character. I, already, I have already done that on social media. I don't really feel like talking about that because that's, you know, Portia is a grown woman at the end of the day. I just think she's looking for love and I think she has misplaced her focus and it's causing her to end up in situations like what she's in. And I don't know why she's not picking up on that or why no one around her isn't picking up on this. Um, but if you look at the picture that she posted with Dennis, her baby daddy, and I guess ex-fiance, Dennis looks like he's happy for her. And not like in a healthy way, but like, yes, you're someone else's problem. Like, I don't gotta marry you no more. I don't gotta deal with you no more. You are his problem, girl. Yes, yes, Simon. Woo! Like, that's what he looks like, <laughs> you know? He doesn't look like, you know, like he valued Portia. So like I said, 
If you are looking to use marriage as a way to get the bag, do you, sis? But be thoughtful about what you're doing. Make sure that, at the, like I said, at the end, you're not the one that's going to be tricked. Because outside of the city girls and, and Meg the Stallion, you know, rap lyrics and all this other stuff that we hear on social media about, yes, yeah, sis, get the bag, blah, 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 blah. Again, there's a real life that you're going to have to live eventually. <laughs> and if you don't actually know what you're doing, you won't actually get what you want. Those are my thoughts on all these various topics. Thank you so much for listening. If you are feeling what I'm saying, please comment below. If you want to uh, bring up something that I may have missed in the video, please comment that below as well. Don't forget to give my video a thumbs up as well as a share if you think someone else needs to hear what I have to say. But thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.